the body's not broken. The body's not weak. The body's not faulty. And the body is always trying to help you and asking yourself the question, what stuff have I been through that I haven't processed or dealt with that could be causing this? Welcome to the Food Matters Podcast, your home for health and wellness. My name is James Colhoun, filmmaker and founder of foodmatters.com, and I am your host on this journey to inner and outer transformation. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to take a short moment to talk to you about the Food Matters Nutrition Certification Program, because studying nutrition completely changed my life. It helped me to heal my father, get him off six different medications, lose 50 pounds and completely regain and transform his life and health. But the problem is, is that we're not really taught about nutrition in our schooling system. The medical profession is rarely pronouncing the facts of using nutrition as medicine. And we have a fast food industry that thrives off misleading consumers. So if you're looking to learn about how to use nutrition as medicine to either heal yourself or a loved one or help prevent chronic disease, or you want to take that next step on your study and nutrition journey and become a certified nutrition coach, then the Food Matters Nutrition Certification Program is for you. This is a 10-week or self-paced internationally accredited certification program designed to take you through some of the most important topics on the la- and the latest research when it comes to nutrition and natural healing, including gut healing, autoimmune conditions, balancing hormones naturally, detoxification, biochemical individual approaches to nutrition, plus it brings together the best that we know about uh, nutrition science and anthropological research and bringing these two approaches together to help you cut through the confusion about what to eat and what to avoid for optimum health. To find out more about the nutrition certification program, plus to download your curriculum guide, head to foodmatters.com forward slash study. You can pause this right now. It will only take you 30 seconds. That's foodmatters.com forward slash study or you can head to the show notes for more information have a beautiful day hey everybody it's james here and today we are going to be talking about how unprocessed trauma in your mind in your life and your human experience can result in physical disease my guest today is jake curry he's a former chiropractor and he's on a mission to help awaken people to this knowledge he's come across this through a practice or a body of work we're going to be talking a little bit about today called German New Medicine. And it's a framework to, to understand how unresolved trauma can result uh, physically in the body. And I think many of us may have made some subtle connections at times between the physical and mental body. But today we're going to dive deeper into that. And hopefully this will give you a uh, deeper insight on how to alleviate pain and experience more joy in your life. Jake, Fellow Aussie, how are you, buddy? <laughs> James, I'm good, mate. It's good to see you. Yeah, so um, I fellow sunny Aussie coaster guys. too, actually. Like we, that's true. Same hometown. It's uh, it's nice. I, I think I very rarely interview people in my same hometown. In fact, we could have been in the same room, but we're not. That's okay. Um, let's let's talk about let's talk about how you got started in this. I know that. You know, in my intro, you were formerly a chiropractor, so that was some entry. I'd love to know more about how you got into this emotional mind-body disease connection. Yeah, awesome. Well, I guess there's a few little stages in there, if if I may. But yeah, I, I the reason I got into chiropractic in the first place was I grew up as a teenager and I was riddled with pain. Like I had all kinds of injuries. I, I was playing AFL and every other week i was just injured like (laughs) it was it was pretty debilitating and pretty frustrating um being an athlete not being able to compete and that sort of came to a head in when i was 16 17 and i had a whole heap of stress fractures uh, and fractures in my lower back which basically put me out for like a year or so no footy nothing like that and one of the things that happened was i at that stage of my life i went down the conventional medicine route of how do I how do I deal with this? How do I uh, fix this? And basically, all that the doctors could really do was just provide me with heavy pain meds, which didn't really <laughs> solve anything. And um, yeah, it, it it wasn't really in alignment with what I was doing. So, luckily, a friend recommended me go see a chiropractor. And one of the beautiful principles about chiropractic is that the body has this innate ability to to heal itself, which 
I was just like, man, that's so cool. That's so true. Of course the body can heal itself. Like mm. if plants can heal, if animals can heal, it's like if we can heal a cut, well, what's the difference between that and a lower back injury? So fast forward, that that's what sent me to um, to chiro school. And all through chiro school, I swear I was just I was just looking for answers. I was looking for answers as to why I was in pain. I was still getting back pain all the time, plus mm-hmm. other injuries. And um, in 20, when was it? 2014, James, I was training at CrossFit Malulba, um, just down the road from your HQ, actually, back yeah. when it was at, at the wharf. And I, I tore my groin uh, doing a warm up. Like I, I literally snapped my one of the groin muscles from the bone. And a pretty huge injury for, for like an innocuous, kind of motion Mm. um like it wasn't like i was doing anything crazy or anything like that and what ended up happening for the next six months nothing improved and the normal healing time for a muscle tear is like six to eight weeks kind of thing and i was looking at six months with with bare minimal improvement improvement and it wasn't like i wasn't doing anything i was Mm. getting adjusted every week i completely eliminated anything inflammatory from my diet like i cut out sugar and wheat and dairy and alcohol and all of the things that were i i were known to be inflammatory i was i was turmeric shots like everything getting acupuncture doing all the rehab and literally nothing changed and as a chiropractor that's an incredibly frustrating place to be working with clients and helping them to eliminate pain and and to help them to heal and here I was not being able to heal myself. Here I was not being able to overcome this particular injury. And so um, I was actually presenting at a, a health and wellness expo on the coast here. And there was someone from Canada, Dr. Alvin DeLeon, who talked about this thing called German New Medicine. I'm like, hey, I'll go and, I'll go and check it out. And what he spoke about, it was everything that I'd intuitively known about the human body in a framework. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. He spoke about this guy called Dr. Hum, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a moment, and about his discoveries, about how he discovered that the human body physically adapts to traumatic events in our life to help us cope, to help us deal with that, mm-hmm. to help us survive. It's a innate survival mechanism of the body. And that was just everything I'd ever heard about was just it was it just was like, this is it. This is it. And so after that, after his presentation, I went up and spoke to one of my mentors, uh, one of my 2B mentors, William, William Hughes from the sunny coast. And I said, Will, like great presentation is really cool. I've had this groin tear for like six months. Does GNM have an understanding of, of what causes like groin pain? And um, he kind of just laughed and smiled and was like, yeah, of course. And um, <laughs> anyway, what he got me to do, this is, this is wild. Yeah. He got me to test my groin. Have you ever had a groin tear, James, or like any kind of groin pain? Uh, I've had some, I mean, I've had not a hernia, but similar pain there, but not a groin tear. No, that mm-hmm. sounds excruciating. Yeah. And so one of the tests you can do, is like if you put a fist in between your knees and squeeze your knees together, like mm-hmm. that's excruciating if you've got any kind of groin injury. And so he got me to do that. He goes, I want you to just do that little test. Yeah. And he said, what's the pain out of 10? I'm like, oh, it's like a seven. It's really, mm-hmm. really painful. And he goes, okay, cool. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? And what then happened was he used the German medicine framework to help me identify the specific, not just like a generalized, but the specific moment, the specific stressful event that I'd experienced that led to this groin injury. And without going into too much detail, within like five to six minutes, he we are able to identify this core issue um, that I'd experienced, that I hadn't processed, that I hadn't dealt with, that I kind of just pushed to the side. I was like, oh, that wasn't a big deal. Like, I'm over it now. Um, and he, we talked about it and he got me to acknowledge it. And he goes, test your groin again. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And I, I, I did my groin and I literally looked at him like dumbfounded because the pain had dropped from like a six or a seven or whatever it was down to like, a 0.5 and I was going, Whoa. what is this voodoo? Yeah. Right. And I was just like bewildered. And after that, it like within a couple of months or like within a couple of weeks, I was back training and back lifting heavy and doing all the things that I love to do. And I was, I just 
left that moment just going, I need to understand everything there is to know about this framework. And yeah, so that was 2014. And since then I've been studying this work. I've been implementing with my clients. Um, I sold my chiropractic practice in 2018 to go full on with this, this work. Um, and yeah, now I'm teaching other health professionals how to implement it into their business. So that moment that I had with, with, with Will back in 2014 is now something that I experience and see every day, every week. It's, it's very cool. Wow. So, I mean, there's a lot to unpack in that intro. Thank you for the detail. Um, just, uh, first of all, the enormous capacity for the body to heal, but then this realization that there's this energetic component to it. And I feel like there's been a lot of people raise the flag or say, Hey, this is something, I mean, Louise Hay was an early proponent of this, like, okay, if you've got back issues, yeah. then you've got problems carrying some weight or some issue in the world, or you've got, you know, uh, this particular disease, it has the, the she was mapping these emotional traumas to, to physical disease. And, um, I guess probably, you know, there's so many questions come out of this, but how do you relate injury at, to, to this like because you said you injured your groin how much of that was an injury or was there a weakness there because of the trauma or because of this particular trauma and not to elaborate on the trauma but what was it in relation to was it a relationship trauma or a financial trauma how can people start to put a tangible feeling to what some of these might be um but yeah gotcha. i mean there's a lot of questions but yeah tell me a little bit more about that yeah. Okay. There's probably, yeah. And if you don't mind, I might unpack that in a few different ways myself. Mm. And I think a lot of people, particularly in your community would be familiar with Louise Hayes. Would that be a fair statement? Like they're familiar with yeah. her work or they've come across. Yeah. 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 Awesome. That's great. So the way that I think about like Louise Hayes stuff is, is great, but the way that I think about it is it's pretty broad in terms mm. of it's like, like if you've got a, a back pain, it's like you, you, you've got this issue where you're carrying something, right? Whereas mm. what Germany medicine is, it's like laser focused inner work. It's able to identify the moments, the specific mm. events that you've experienced at a specific time in your life. So it's an understanding that skin pain is caused by this type of conflict or uh, pain is caused by another one or liver issues are caused by a different thing. So if you don't mind I, I think just to give you give the listeners some context understanding how this stuff came about would be really useful would you mind if i kind of started like just piece that Please. together for them and yeah. then we'll, i can explain it'll make more sense yeah so um this work was discovered by a guy called uh, dr richard hammer in uh, germany he was uh, head of internal medicine at uh, a university hospital in munich and what happened was fit healthy dude his son, Dirk Hammer, was unexpectedly shot and killed. So while on holiday, he like he wasn't he was caught in the crossfire of some incident, apparently. I don't know the full details, but Dirk, his son, later passed away. And I can't imagine how traumatic that would be. Like that would be one of the hardest things that a human being can experience is to see a child pass away. And not long after that, like a, a couple of months after, Dr. Harmer developed a testicular lump a testicular cyst a testicular cancer if you will mm. and he goes hang on like otherwise really healthy ate really well exercised looked after himself he postulated that maybe this 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 testicular cancer came about because of that experience that he had and so what he did was he he interviewed like he was just working in a hospital he went around and spoke with all the other men that had been diagnosed with testicular cancer and he chatted to them and he asked them what had been going on in their lives prior to their diagnosis. And what he found is that every single one of them had been through something unexpected. That's the key criteria, some kind of unexpected event that you could not foresee coming. And more importantly, he identified that they'd all gone through a loss conflict. So mm -hmm. loss of a child, loss of a pet, a divorce, maybe a specific type of loss. And so he found that really interesting. And so this was in the late sixties, early seventies. And, and so he was uh, taking some, he started taking CT scans of these people's brains. And what he identified is these small concentric rings all in the exact same location on these men. And so here he was, he's found these men, they've all got testicular cancer or testicular cyst. 
And upon brain scan, they've all got these same concentric rings in a certain part of their brain. And they'd all been through some kind of loss, some kind of stressful, unexpected event. And so he thought that was pretty wild. And, and this was the start of his work. And, and what he later discovered is that when he had this testicular cyst, he actually essentially had more testicle. And what that meant was high testosterone and more sperm count. So he goes, why would a man who's just lost his son need more testosterone and more sperm? Like, why do you think that might be? Make make another one. Ooh. To make another one. And so this is where he started to understand that the body is not broken, that, that disease isn't a malfunction by Mother Nature, that the human body is not created weak and faulty and, and with design flaws. The human body is this incredible piece of machinery that knows exactly what it's doing. And here he discovered that disease, as we conventionally call it, is here to assist, here to help us to cope with stressful events in our lives. So this is the first notion of it is that disease is not a problem that it's actually here to help us to help us cope with something at the physical level which when i heard that i was just like this is that just made so much sense to me and it's like it's almost like the most logical thing you could you could think of so from that dr hummer then mapped out other health other diseases and other health conditions and so he basically mapped out everything using interviews and case studies and brain and linking them with brain scans and so this work is similar to Louise Hayes' work in, in a concept way, but it is like laser, laser focused and ultra specific. Mm -hmm. and, and there's actually a lot of science to it as well. So I can link up some of the, the um, pages, uh, but learninggnm.com, yeah, it's a website and it goes through every condition. If you've got something, you can look up what type of uh, causes there are there. So. That's kind of how it works in, in relation to like Louise Hayes' work, which I guess was the first, mm. I've talked a lot there, but I guess that's the first part of um, yeah. first part of your question. And the second part of the question was really around, thank you for that explanation. It makes a lot of sense. And yeah, you're right. I think Louise Hayes' work was broad. It was definitely based on anecdotal research as well. So she would interview a lot of people that had AIDS or back pain or heart disease or liver malfunction. And she would map that with their personal story, personal trauma, and then create this fabric. But I, I don't think she had the brain scan data that this German doctor had, which is a whole nother level of specificity, which is a very typically German trait. So that's awesome. Um, <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, it reminds me a little bit of like Max Gerson, this, this, you know, natural cancer slash natural therapy doctor who created this therapy to help with migraines and then ultimately helped with other diseases. It was very, this, the specificity was so intense and rigorous. So it's great that we have mm -hmm. these people in our, in our world. I guess one of the questions, the second part of the question was, how do we know if something is just a physical, how do we know that a physical mm -hmm. pain is related to an emotional trauma or whether it's just a, uh, an injury or something that happened haphazardly or does this german new medicine not believe that things happen by mistake how do you differentiate between those two yeah that's a really good question so first and foremost if i was walking down the street and i got hit by a bus and i break my leg there is no emotional cause for that happening it's a purely physical trauma right however if that thing failed to heal now it's a different story so going back to my groin injury I was dealing with a conflict. I was experiencing some kind of trauma. And by the way, when I use the word trauma, I most people immediately go to the most horrific things that human beings have to experience, like murder and abuse and, and the like, right? But traumas are just uh, essentially anything that creates a maladaptive response in your nervous system um, that can stem from anything that's unexpected. And it's highly personal. Like what's traumatic to you, James, is going to be not traumatic to me and, and vice versa. Mm. So for me, I, th that groin injury, I'd gone through a stressful, unexpected event. And, and the event was leaving an ex-girlfriend in moving to the Sunshine Coast from Melbourne. And so part of that was like, I was dealing with that. And I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like I'm all good. I'm, I'm all, all like that. And what ended up happening was 
that actually changed the tissue structure, making it inherently weaker. It was breaking the breaking the the groin down, so to speak, so that when I was warming, like I tore my groin in a warm up. Like I, it wasn't like I was snatching hundred kilos or doing something silly. It was just it was that. So that's one of the first signs of if there is an emotional aspect to a, a health condition, particularly with physical pain, is if the injury or if the injury started from a physical event, but it just, it doesn't add up. Like you hear of people, when I was a Cairo, you hear of people blowing discs in their back from putting their socks on. It's like, well, hmm. that's not, that's not really the same as being hit by a bus. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. So yeah, that would be the first element is if you're dealing with some kind of injury, for example, like pains, are, pains are a really easy example. So many people have dealt with it. It's so common. Um, but if it, if it starts when it, it doesn't make sense, additionally, if it takes longer to heal than expected. So again, if you've got a groin tear, for example, it, that might take six to eight weeks to heal. If you're looking at two years or six months, or it comes back twice a year, or you get the same pattern uh, every winter, or, or if every time you eat wheat, it flares up, like whatever the case may be, if it's, if it's something that returns in a similar fashion, that's almost certainly, uh, there's almost certainly like a mind body link there, if you will. Um, if you've tried conventional treatment, so let's say you've got a particular health condition and you go to a, a chiro, you go to an osteo or a physio or, a, or an ND or a naturopath or a, a nutritionist or whatever, and they're going, you should be better by now, but you're not. It's like mm. by all of our tests and measures, you should be making improvements, but you're not. That is almost certainly uh, a link there as well. Yeah, that's super interesting. Um, I think what you said about taking longer to heal than expected could probably resonate with a lot of people because they might have the injury from something that they could say was not related potentially to an emotional link or a traumatic link. However, if it's refusing to heal, that is a key indicator that it probably ties into this system of medicine where they could try to identify a, a cause. And what, what is the, I mean, so there's people listening to this right now that probably have gut issues, um, is quite common, um, autoimmune conditions where the body is like fighting itself. And that's something, isn't it? You know, if you think about that from a, from a perspective, the body wanting to try to attack itself or even myself, I have, Does it want to attack itself? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, then I have like, I have a knee injury that I, I did surfing three or four months ago and it's coming back again now. And so if people are like with physical pain or a physical dis-ease, like digestive issues or an autoimmune condition, is there a quick way that they could try to identify whether there's an emotional traumatic component or how does this system of medicine approach these sort of disparate illnesses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first, the first component, like, as I said, at the start of this, um, the body's not broken, the body's not weak, the body's not faulty and the body is always trying to help you, right? Body is always trying to heal. And one of the things that i that sort of goes against that is the, the concept of autoimmune diseases. It's like mm. when we look at things from a genome perspective, it's like the body's not trying to destroy itself. The body's not trying to um, eat itself or, or whatever the case may be. I think with those kind of conditions, especially there's almost certainly going to be an underlying uh, stressful event or trauma that's, that's causing the symptoms. And one of the things that I'm big on is looking at the physical side of the symptoms and looking at what they mean, as opposed to say, the condition itself. So, and, and this is a, like, this is a, this is my opinion, but a lot of the time with autoimmune conditions, they're kind of lumped into this basket of when people don't know what's going on. They can't explain why mm. someone's dealing with this symptom. It's often lumped as like an autoimmune condition. So yeah, when you have this understanding, you can actually start to understand what's causing those conditions. So, um, but yeah, things like knee pain, like if you wanted to, we could probably nut that out and a few minutes and help you identify not that you have to do it on <laughs> life on air it can be a bit yeah. confronting for people but we can actually um work through that and, and help you to identify what those things are that are causing that because it's um 
it's quite simple, but essentially it's just about understanding. And and I guess a lot of your audience too, James, they're pretty intuitive. They're pretty in touch with their uh, their bodies. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I love Food Matters. You guys do some wonderful stuff. I remember watching some of the first ever um, – First ever docos out at Ground Organics and Lullaby, which was very cool. Um, nice. But yeah, a lot of the audience are, are people that are really health conscious and really health orientated and, that, and, and health is a really big value for, for them. And it's like for those people, it's if they truly believe that their body is not broken, well, then this is something to look at. If they're dealing with something that's not not getting better it's like it's 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 really important to have a look into this and look at what are the potential stresses and and traumatic events that i've experienced that are contributing contributing to or causing this particular condition so yeah it's just it's a matter of if some people hear this and they're like jake you're full of crap like (laughs) i don't want to know about it because they're the, the Western medicine way is is their way. But for those people who think there's more out there than Western medicine and, and other ways of looking at healing, I'd be, I'd be very inclined to start looking at and asking yourself the question, what stuff have I been through that I haven't processed or dealt with that could be causing this? If people start with just that question, James, it can open all kinds of doors for healing and possibility for them. Wow. So profound. And Jake, I I think, you know, I'm really, I really subscribe to the same ideology. I've always spoken about how many of my mentors have taught me that, you know, cardiovascular disease is your body protecting its arteries. It's using cholesterol to plug up weak arterial walls. A tumor is basically your body protecting itself against an overgrowth of these cells. And so all of these responses in the body are healing responses. It's a preservation response as opposed to a disease. So I think that mental shift is the first most important shift to make. And I I hope that everyone listening to this is on their way to that belief, Mm. um, which is backed by science as well. Then I think the next step is to really go deeper into then if there is an injury or a trauma that's not healing, that's another level deeper, I think, in, in, in saying, okay, maybe there's some intelligence in my body that I haven't yet unlocked. And I guess a question I have for you now is how does the work of, there's so many energetic medicine practices out there from Reiki to tapping to hypnotherapy. But when I think about this work, kinesiology comes to mind a little bit where people do muscle testing to find an underlying emotional cause. Now, we haven't really got to the mm-hmm. mechanics process yet, but when this gentleman was doing this healing on you, was he asking your conscious body questions? Like, have you had this lately? Have you yeah. had this lately? Have you had this lately? Because how much of what we have is 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 sub subconscious trauma that we don't know about versus how much is conscious and how can this practice in a way discern the difference between the two got you so when you go through a traumatic event whether it be big or small your subconscious mind will take a snapshot of everything you see hear smell taste touch sense and and perceive right and it does this to go hey the next time that i encounter that grizzly bear we know that there's danger around the corner. So, yes, you, you're correct. Is these these uh, traumas, particularly if they're long-standing, they live at a subconscious level, but that doesn't mean they're not accessible quite easily. So, the way that Germany medicine works is there's a, basically a process in terms of uh, gathering data and gathering understanding, so that you can ask laser-focused questions. So mm-hmm. if, for example, I was working with someone and they had a, like if, if we take Louise Hayes approach, I'm not knocking Louise Hayes approach at all, by the way. Um, it's like in that approach, it's like, where do you feel like you can't forgive someone? It's a very mm-hmm. big mm-hmm. concept. Whereas the way that we go with Germany medicine is we go three years ago when this particular condition started, where was it that you experienced a very unexpected event where you felt as if blah, 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 in relation to your mother, in relation to your Mm. spouse. And so when you ask a question like that, James, instead of it being a broad, where do you feel like you need to forgive someone? When you can ask a laser focused question, what ends up happening is you are speaking directly to the conscious mind, but people 
will go and they'll pull out this like memory from their unconscious or subconscious mind and they go, oh my goodness, I haven't thought about this thing in years. And so that's how we that's how we unlock it is by utilizing really specific and really laser focused questions directly to the conscious mind. We can unlock the subconscious by it's like by knowing what keys to have. So GM is, is kind of like having a, a set of really amazing keys that you know how to open those doors and and help people access the specific events and traumas and that are causing their symptoms. Yeah, wow, that's really cool. It, I've got a close buddy of mine. His name's Chris Walk. He featured in our Transcendence docu series. I think season one, episode two, uh, alongside people like Wim Hof and so forth. And he suffered from uh, stage four colon cancer diagnosis when he was in his early thirties. Um, went and had surgery. Decided not to do chemo. Went on a natural healing approach. And then in retrospect, he's done a lot of research and interviewed a lot of people. And he's come up with this idea that there's always in every case, a cancer trigger, which is like a traumatic event that people experience either a bankruptcy or a divorce or a, a death in the family or something like this that happens. And then three, six months later, there is this cancer diagnosis. And he was speaking about this in the film. And we were re relating that specifically to stress in the body. So anytime there's a big event, then stress, cortisol reduces your immunity. And then if you have a genetic predisposition in your body or in your lineage, it can potentially go to that place and then result in, in an illness in that way you might have a genetic propensity for, for illness. But I think German new medicine, is it different? Does it believe that certain illnesses are correlated to certain specific types of trauma? Or is any illness could be related to any trauma and it's this questioning process that elicits that response? Do you understand the question? So is, that, is, is a knee always, in my instance, I don't know, loss of something or lack of control? Or is, mm -hmm. or is the knee, could be anything and it's a questioning process that elicits that particular uh, trauma? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess one of the, the fundamental differences in understanding of the human body with, with GNM versus conventional and even natural therapies is like the concept of, of in, like uh, genetic predisposition to certain diseases, diseases. So GNM, we take an epigenetic approach and essentially yeah. what happens is, is have you ever heard that saying? It's like uh, genetics loads the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah, right. So the concept that we look at is going, well, everyone has a gene for breast cancer. Everyone has a gene for colon cancer. Everyone has a gene for X, Y, Z. It's just a matter of what is going on in their environment to determine if that gene will express or stay switched off. So with GNM, it's the understanding that, uh, again, the body isn't broken and that specific disease processes are designed to assist us help with uh, certain types of, of stressful events. So it's probably easy if I give you a couple of examples, but like musculoskeletal pain, uh, joints, stuff like that is linked with what we call a self devaluation conflict. So it's a very specific type of, of conflict. Different parts of the body have different meanings, but essentially what's happening is the, the muscles and stuff break down physically so they can rebuild stronger so that you're physically stronger and no longer getting devalued. Like eczema, for example, a skin condition, is caused by a separation conflict. It's that old saying, someone's been torn from my skin. So having someone go through that, your skin during that cortisol driven state will actually go numb and you'll actually lose cells from where that person touched you. So wherever you subconsciously associated that connection, the skin will actually go, go numb so that you can't feel them, right? So that you can't feel the painful separation. Um, mm heart disease, for example, like coronary arteries is, is linked with a territorial loss. So losing your territory, losing, like losing a business, losing a spouse, losing your home, the coronary arteries during the stress phase will actually ulcerate and widen so that you can get more blood into your heart so that you've got more energy to fight so that you've got more energy to regain your territory. Like every health condition is, is different. And so it's, it's less a matter of like, what are you genetically exposed to? And more a matter of what are you, um, how are you predisposed to perceive certain types of events? 
if that makes sense. So you and I could go through the exact same traumatic event. Let's say we're twins. I mean, you're quite blonde. I'm very not blonde, <laughs> but we wouldn't pass as twins. But let's say we were. If you and I went through the exact same traumatic event as as little kids, you might perceive that event in one way. You might, let's say our parents got divorced. Mm -hmm. Let's say you perceive that event as like, I now miss my my dad who's no longer living with us. You might experience a skin condition because you perceived it as a separation conflict. Whereas I might perceive it as that was all my fault. If only I hadn't have been so noisy with my toys, mommy and daddy wouldn't have split up. I might experience mm. that as a self devaluation. I might experience musculoskeletal pain. So mm. we all go through these traumatic events, but how we perceive them is going to determine what changes are going to be needed at a biological level to help us cope. Are you suffering from gut issues, an autoimmune condition, chronic pain, imbalanced hormones, and you just can't seem to find a solution? Well, you're not alone. If you're listening to this podcast, you likely value your health, your well-being, energy, and vitality. And at Food Matters, we believe that your body is worthy of good care and that there's nobody more suitably qualified to care for it than yourself, which is why we have created the Food Matters Nutrition Certification Program. This program is designed to improve and increase your knowledge when it comes to important topics around the gut, autoimmune conditions, balancing hormones, detoxification. Plus, it really has helped me cut through the confusion about what to eat and avoid when there's so many different dietary philosophies out there from veganism to paleo to plant-based to whole foods to wild foods to qualitarian, who knows these days. We have assembled some of the brightest minds in nutrition and natural healing including experts like David Wolf, Dr. Libby Weaver, Mark Hyman, Dr. Alejandro Junger, and so many more. To find out more about how you can join us on this program and become a certified nutrition coach to help heal yourself, loved ones, or even help take this message to more people by working with people one-on-one -on -one or starting your own wellness business, you can find out more at foodmatters.com forward slash study. Again, that's foodmatters.com forward slash study. And this speaks to this idea that we all perceive the world differently and how we perceive the world is also based on our beliefs, our values, and how we're brought up and our sub sort of conscious conditioning, which Bruce Lipton speaks to a lot, who was one of the sort of key discoverers of the epigenetic sort of phenomena. And also this, this subconscious conditioning of the human spirit and to see this sort of all coming together more and more with your work and this German new medicine is just amazing. Um, really powerful. So I, I guess mm. probably then if people are perceiving this situation differently, I'm just going back to your previous work, right? So as a chiropractor and then your personal experience, it must be frustrating to see clients with a, pain issue come and I believe in physical therapy. I think chiropractic care has been amazing me for too. me and many incredible stories yeah. of transformation. Um, and yet it does stop somewhere, doesn't it? Like if people have a persistent issue and you're not able to facilitate the healing of that, then you must have been frustrated. There, there has to be some underlying something else here. And this is, this is what this work is. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the case. Like I love chiropractic. I still get adjusted. I ad, I advocate people getting adjusted and, and, and looking after their body because it's, it's the only one you got. So you need to take care of it. But when we're looking at things like pain, for example, and by the way, chiropractic is more about optimizing your body so that your nervous system is actually working better so that you can actually perceive the world differently in a way. So you're not perceiving it in such a stress state. But um, when it comes to pain, it's like, I would have people come in to my office and they would have like some kind of musculoskeletal condition. And sometimes they can be purely physical. And what I'd see with these people is like in a, in a visit or two, they're great. They're fantastic. And they're on the, on back yeah. on, back on the horse, so to speak. But then there's people that just, you would do everything right. right. You'd be treating the, the physical side of things, but there'd be no change in what they're experiencing. And that's what was frustrating for me personally, uh, as a, 
as a someone who dealt with pain but that's what made me realize that there must be more out there and that's what made me really dive into this work uh 100 yeah back in yeah a while mm. ago <laughs> yeah so if, if someone presents like say for instance we're working on my knee and you're asking these laser focused questions right and then i have a realization i'm like wow well at that time xyz was happening which made me feel like this mm -hmm. Now, there's a concept in medicine I've become personally aware of through the work that I've done with people and just witness their transformation. And it's almost like the awareness of what is underlying the issue creates the healing response because right. there's this like, oh, well, I didn't put that together. Then the body starts to go. Where does German New Medicine sit with this? Because you had a, a seven go down to a 0.5 through a realization or what there are other things that happened? Yeah. So oftentimes, particularly if the, if the stressful event, because the reason most people's symptoms persist is it's like you go through a traumatic event, but then, as I said, your subconscious mind takes a snapshot of all of the things that were going on around that time. And so every time you re-experience one of those things that remind you of that initial event, James, it refires the symptoms. Okay. So even though the traumatic event might be long gone, you're still subconsciously being reminded of these what we call tracks and triggers and your symptoms persist. So, so often being aware of the initial event and you, and you going, Oh man, yeah, I don't have to worry about that anymore. All oh, that thing's passed. That awareness alone is like a, you see people just oh, like take a big sigh and you can see their, you can see them change. And so often that is when you'll see things drop from a seven to a, to a 0.5, like working in our, like I work with practitioners now and, like yesterday, for example, we worked with a client who I was like, all right, let's go through how we, the process of how we help a client eliminate pain. I was like, is there anyone who's got pain here? Let's just quickly go through it. And so we had a lady who had ankle pain and she's had it on and off uh, for 20 years and she'd had a bout of it for like the last two, three weeks. And within like five, 10 minutes, it was, it was gone. So, and <laughs> that's, that was, we've had like two or three of them this week. So it's something that's so common that we see. So often if it's a light thing, you're, the awareness alone, James, can just shift it and, it and it it tunes into the body's innate intelligence and the body can now start un, like having that capacity to heal. It's almost like the body's always trying to heal, but if there's something in the way, it just can't get any further. And all this work is, it's like the awareness can pull that out of the way so the body can keep going. Now, I'd say that's the case with a lot of these examples, but oftentimes when there's, it's a deep seated thing, or it's something that people can't let go of, that's when we need some additional, um, interventions, if you will, to help them reprocess and repackage that event. Mm. And then what does that look like? Is that other therapies outside of G M G N M? Is it things like tapping? Is it things like hypnosis? Is it things like, um, you know, kinesiology or, or, or is, mm -hmm. do they have practice do they have practices in this framework that can, that can help? Yeah. Like all of those modalities are fantastic. Like, uh, I'm a hypnosis instructor. So I actually train our students in hypnosis because we see that as being such a powerful modality to help people re reorganize and reprocess things at a subconscious or unconscious level. So that's the modality that, that we utilize and help our clients with. Um, but yeah, you can, it's like, once you've identified that thing, it doesn't really matter what you use. It's like, you can, however, you, there's so many ways to skin a cat. You can use hypnotherapy. You can use tapping. You can, uh, we also teach a lot of like nervous system regulation so that people can calm the nervous system around these specific events. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all, it all works. That's why, that's why everything has success. That's why every modality has success. But I believe that when you add germany medicine to the mix when you can get so specific and identify the root cause it makes whatever you're already doing so much more effective yeah because you're in a way identifying or allowing to release through these laser like focused german-esque questions this subconscious yeah. trauma which has become in a way cognizized or brought forward into the awareness and then allowed to be seen and then allowed to be mm -hmm. ide uh, potentially, um, released. That's, that's, um, yeah, really powerful. And yeah. One of the things on that if, is like 
one the, GNM talks about like trauma in, in terms of three categories or like three criteria. One is it has to be unexpected. So it has mm-hmm. to catch you off guard. You couldn't see it coming. It has to be emotionally distressing. And that can be that's gonna be different for everyone. Big things, small things, as long as it feels heavy. But the third element of that, James, is isolating. So so often the things that will manifest physically in the body are the things that people keep to themselves, the things that they don't feel like they have the resources to deal with or the things that they just are too ashamed or too fearful to speak about. And so when you ask these, when you, when you ask these, these, these questions and when you can really get to the bottom of things and you go, James, how do you feel about X, Y, Z? And then you go, oh, crap, mm. I haven't talked about that with anyone or I haven't discussed that with anyone. Mm. Simply by talking about it, by expressing it, you actually start to take your power back from that specific event. And that's actually a huge, mm-hmm. that's a huge aspect of healing um, when it comes to this work. Wow. Wow. How complex are we, Jake? I mean, this is, this is so fascinating, huh? Humans are a, you know, this is just such a dynamic energetic system we live in and i feel like the more that i've yeah incredible i feel the more i've delved into energetic practice the more i see the body and our existence on earth as just this this incredible phenomena you know that that we live in this matrix of thoughts and trauma and physical slash energetic reality which this type of these types of modalities merge those two you know are we real or are Mm. we just the manifestation of our thoughts and emotions like there's it's a it's a bit twilight sort of zone um how do we stop these underlying patterns in the future okay so if we um are able to look back retrospectively on an illness or on on a trigger or on a physical pain and then identify a trauma if we are feeling like something comes up that's unexpected, that's a big trauma, that's maybe we're isolating, we don't feel comfortable talking to other people about it. How can we get on the front foot with this German new medicine and potentially be like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm experiencing something unexpected, something traumatic and big, and it's putting me in a stressful state, and I don't feel like talking about it with anybody. What can people do to try to like shake that energy off and, and sort of beat yeah beat it before it becomes something in the body that is such a beautiful question i no one's ever asked me that no, this is something that i always want to share with people because it's it's how we can actually become empowered and, and take control of our own health um, it's how we can literally heal ourselves right so in order to understand that it's when you go through a traumatic event there's two phases that the body goes through okay so once that that unexpected event hits you're going to go into what we call a conflict active phase. This conflict active phase is a highly sympathetic driven, it's a highly cortisol adrenalized uh, position. And you can probably think about it, right? So when something unexpected happens, you get this flood of cortisol, this flood of adrenaline, you all of a sudden feel really wired. It's like you feel really stressed. You feel really, I, I love coffee, but if I have two cups a day, I feel scattered and wired right so it's kind of yeah. a similar feeling so this this conflict active phase will last as long as it takes for you to resolve the conflict okay so mm. let's just let's just say i don't know let's just say you had an argument with a friend like it was really unexpected it was distressing and you felt like you couldn't talk with it about it to anyone the moment you have that unexpected event your nervous system is going to go into this this fight flight state essentially and during which time your body is physically adapting. It's changing. It's creating meaningful adaptations, James, designed to help you fix whatever that event was, to fix the argument in this example, okay? Now, during the conflict active phase, this is the the interesting thing about GNM. For 80% of the types of conflicts that we see around about, you don't get any symptoms while you're in that conflict active phase, none. You, because you've got so much cortisol, you've got so much adrenaline going through your body, you actually feel pretty good, okay? But when we get the symptoms is when the conflict resolves and we go into what's known as a, as a healing phase or uh, people call it healing crisis, but essentially you go into this really deep parasympathetic state and this is when your body actually repairs the changes that were going on in the conflict active phase. So this is why 
I don't know if you've ever gone on holiday and got sick. It's like, this is why it's like, if you were stressed out at work or whatever, then you go on holiday, it resolves the conflict. Your body starts to, to, to heal and repair. It's also why you get sore after going to the gym, not during the gym. Um, it's also why people get so get colds and, and things like that after an exam period. So it's really important to identify when you're in that conflict active phase, because if you can identify when you're in that conflict active phase and reduce the severity of it or reduce the length of it, you're going to reduce the healing symptoms on the back end of it. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's a really keen observation, but I guess that's in theory easier than it is in practice, right? Like if you're going through a traumatic event, it's like, Hey, I need to be less, this needs to be less traumatic but I fully get it. Yeah. Or you need to maybe have practices to disassociate your emotional involvement in that to maybe the extent that you would have previously. Yeah. So the, the first step is awareness is actually understanding that your nervous system is in that state. So key signs to look out for cold hands and cold feet. This is a big one. It's like, if you're in that conflict active phase, you're in that adrenalized phase, your hands and your feet will be quite cool, even though the rest of your body is pretty warm. Um, you might be sweating more, like you might get really clammy, like if you were doing a public speech or something along those lines. Um, if you're going through a stressful event, James, how do you think your sleep's going to be? Not good. Rubbish, right? It's you can have difficulty getting to sleep. And one of the things that we hear people say is they usually wake up, bolt awake in the middle of the night around 3 a.m. That's another hallmark sign. Your appetite is usually suppressed. You don't really want to eat much. Um, Again, if you're being chased by a lion, you're not going to stop and pick a peach off a tree. You're just going to be like, I need to get the hell out of here. So these are some really common, your digestion will slow as well during this period. So when you're in that conflict active phase, if your sleep's disturbed, disturbed, if you've got cold hands and feet, if you can't stop thinking about a particular event as well, like you, you just can't let it go, or you find yourself talking about it a lot or wanting to discuss it with people, these are hallmark signs. So the key is once you identify what that, that you're stressed about something, that your nervous system is in that state, the best thing that you can do is find a way to resolve it practically. So maybe it's about talking with your friend. Maybe it's about doing something practically, but sometimes you can't do that. Like sometimes it's, it's, you can't necessarily resolve something there and then. So it's a matter of learning how to regulate your nervous system, learning how to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, through breath work, through meditation, through yoga, through um, talking with people. Like I honestly believe that women live longer than men on average because they talk about their stuff. Mm. So they would be my they would be my top tips for down regulating um, during that phase. Yeah, I, I think just that last point you made is is enormous. Like especially in the Australian male culture. Um, you and I have probably come across this and you're an ex AFL footballer. So I'm sure you've seen it. Um, and also globally in the world, men in general. And I think that, you know, being a part of, you know, different sort of spiritual groups myself and, you know, communities in, 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 in Australia or Vanuatu or even in Bali, where in, in Bali in particular, there was like lots of men's circles where people would share mm. problems they're going through. And it created this safe environment for people to share and like, get it out. And there's this really beautiful sense that that was such a powerful healing process is to just share the challenge and then to see in the room, all the other men that were listening to this one person's challenge and sort of nodding going, dude, I've been there fully get it. Or I am there. Mm -hmm. And just that shared acknowledgement that the biggest struggles we go through, which is you know, the, the whole Buddhist philosophy is that we're going to suffer as humans because we have all these ideals and expectations about how life's going to be. And then it's not always like that. Right. So physical pain, emotional pain, um, uh, um, finances, like all these different areas of life at any one point in time, one or two of them are giving you a hard go. And that's just, that's the whole life story of this particular incarnation. So I think that idea of having a place to share or finding a therapist or somebody to just get it out is, um, that's a really powerful. Message. It's huge. It's huge. And like when I don't work with many clients these days, um, just cause we're so focused on training our, um, practitioners, but one of the elements, like one of the 
at home bits of care that I'll often recommend for people is is find your tribe, find a community, find mm-hmm. your find your people because it's like uh, you've probably read the Rosetto study, James. Where have you read that? No, I've heard I have of the not. not. You don't talk about the Rosetta Stone, Rosetta Study. No, the Rosetta Study. So the Rosetto Study was um, basically there was a, a town called Rosetto in I think it's in Midwest America. Um, I'll, I'll be butchering this. I'm paraphrasing. But oh, this they, is the Italians, right? Yeah, 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 I think so. Tell the story. Tell the story. I, I want to remind yeah, yeah. it again because it was so great. It's been a while. So yeah, this this kind of really highlights the point that we just talked about in terms of community being so important and so vital to health and well being. I'm, I'm on a tangent here, but like I, I follow Yes Theory on YouTube. I watched a video of theirs recently, and they went to I think that they're called Blue Zones, James. Is that right? Yes, where they Blue have Zone, centurions. Yeah, David. David Butner, he came up with the concept and he circled all the areas on the map where there was the most centurions mm. and he happened to use the blue pen. So that's why it was called Blue Zones. Just ah, like wicked. I never knew yeah. that. That's cool. Yeah. But I watched this YouTube um, on Yes Theory and they went and visited some of these things. And, and one of the things that they realized is that they they didn't exercise that much or they, they kept relatively healthy. They drank way too much wine in, in most cases. But one of the things that they had was they just had these incredible communities. It's like people left keys in the door. You could rely on other people. You could talk about things. And and if 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 someone was to ask me what is the most important aspect to health, I would say that. I would honestly say that community and connection is one of the the, the most critical factors. And the Rosetto study shows that as well. It was uh, the study of uh, heart disease in America. Uh, it was a time when America was having incredible. Or they still are, but incredibly high rates of heart disease in all of the Western world. And there was this little pocket in uh, America called Rosetto where the the people that live there had very minimal heart disease. And they went and studied these people and they go, what are they eating? What, like, what, are, they, what are they drinking? What are their exercise like? And these people smoked and they drank and they ate lots of rich food. And so they were looking for something else. They weren't sure what was causing them to be have such great heart health. And then what happened is, and this was an Ita- like a beautiful uh, first generation Italian community. And then over the years, that Italian community started to, to break down and started to become more single household um, dwellings as opposed to like multi-generations living under the one roof. Mm-hmm. And once that happened, they started to see their heart disease in this town rise up to meet the rest of um, the averages basically in America and around the Western world. And so they started to postulate that, community was a big part of what was, was something that was really cardio protective. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I remember the study now and, and that's a bit, that was a big takeaway from the blue zones research for me alongside a book from mm. a gentleman called healthy at 100, who I was actually just on a call with this morning, uh, John Robbins, and he analyzed all these cultures around the world where people live long. And of course there was many dietary commonalities amongst these communities However, the amount of non-dietary community-like factors that potentially contributed yeah. to their longevity and health were, were incredible. And like you said, they would eat long lunches, they'd often drink, they would sleep, have siestas, they would do all these things, but they lived very commonly in multi-generational homes with you mm-hmm. know, grandkids and grandparents and all together. And we have completely dis- deconstructed that in the West and yeah. then we add in fast food and convenience food and then we add in toxic food and then we add in stress yeah. and we're no wonder that we're on just this collision course with just skyrocketing illness and disease. And then we go and look at disease and treat it like everything's a nail and that, you know, and, and throw drugs and medicine and everything. And we're just hitting it with these hammers. And then maybe people branch out into nutrition and natural medicine, they get a great result. But then I love where our conversation has gone today around the fact that there is very commonly underlying emotional traumas that connect to the physical body. And um, Mm. yeah, that's a beautiful message, you know, it's a powerful message. And maybe is there something you wanted to leave the audience with just in terms of, bringing this all together i think the study you mentioned was amazing but if there's anything else you want to touch on or or things that you do in your day-to-day yeah. life that that make people could in a way replicate and leverage your life lessons into their daily rituals and practices yeah i think um 
I think like having the community aspect is such a is such an amazing thing. And one other element as well is it's like this is something that I I, I always talk about is life is going to life. We can't prevent traumatic events from occurring. It's it's the nature of it, right? It's the nature of the human experience. We can't prevent those stressful, unexpected events happening. But what we can do is we can we can prepare our body, we can prepare our mind and be in a state where when those things do happen, they they don't completely knock us over. We can get back up quickly. And one of the thing one of the elements with this is is the thing that I see and the, one of the biggest problems that I see in in the world is that people fear their body so much. They fear getting sick. They fear getting certain diseases and, and being incapacitated. And one of the things that I see perpetuate the cycle of symptoms is fear, is being worried and being fearful about your body. Whereas when you can really understand this work and live this work, you understand that your body is not broken. You understand that every symptom that you have is an incredible adaptation of nature, of mother nature, who's not making a mistake, but's actually doing something to try and help you, to assist you. So when you can start to look at your symptoms as not being a problem, but being a blessing to help you awaken to something inside of you that you need to deal with, this is the place to live from. Well, this is, this is a, you don't have to live from this place, but it's a lot less stressful. It's a lot less um, difficult to do that. So that's the place that I live from. It's like, if I'm ever dealing with a symptom, which by the way, still happens, but it's like, I know what to do. And I don't get into fear. I don't get into panic. I don't get into worry. I go, what is this trying to teach me? Because I, I trust the wisdom of my body. I trust this innate intelligence that, that lives with, that lives within you, that lives within me, that lives within all of us. And when you can work with your body instead of against it, it's such a beautiful place to be. Wow. Great message. Um, uh, I'm really grateful for your groin injury. <laughs> I think that's an incredible uh, moment that, you know, that awoken you. I'm really grateful for my father's illness, this type of sort of mystery, chronic fatigue illness that sort of put us onto a path of helping people liberate unnecessary su suffering through focusing on what they put in their mouth and what they avoid. And I love how all these therapies are, are coming together as we sort of move into more of an energetic realm of understanding our existence mm. uh, and i think tesla put it in a really great way he said if you want to understand the nature of humanity and the nature of our universe you have to understand it from an energetic perspective because that is what drives everything in terms of vibration and, and frequency think, yeah that's right and i think we're i think we are progressively moving towards that direction and people like you and the work you're doing. I'm so grateful that we had this conversation today. Uh, I'm moving the needle. I'm really appreciative of your work. I'd love to connect in person. We should, we're in the same town and, um, and keep it up. Thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. James, thank you so much for having me. And um, thank you for everything that you are doing with food matters it's like you are really moving the needle and helping people to really wake up to the power that they have to start healing themselves and to take their health back into their hands so thank you for the work that you do thank you jake and if people want to follow jake they can just uh, look him up on instagram it's jake curry c-u-r-r-i-e and what website's best that people can connect with you on jake um if you just go to mindbodymasters.com that's our website so yeah that's probably the best place. We, we, we keep a pretty minimal blueprint. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks, Jake. Have a beautiful day. For everything that we've mentioned in today's episode, you can check out the show notes. There will be links and information there for you. And before I go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to invest in yourself and be here for this podcast. If there's anybody that you can think of who could benefit from this information, please make sure to share it with them. We believe in the power of life-changing information and it's especially powerful when it's shared from a trusted source. And finally, if you could leave us a comment or make sure to subscribe to the podcast, we would greatly appreciate that. It helps us continue to bring you this life-changing information and make sure that you get all future podcast updates sent to you. Have a beautiful day and thank you once again.